Our form of spirituality is when you're doing so good, the next man's going to come up to you and ask you how you're doing that. No matter if it's cooking, in the gym, at work, doing your homework, even folding your bed or doing your laundry. When the next man comes up and asks you, how are you doing that? That's our form of spirituality here. Welcome to the Spartan Becca series on Spartan Up with Jared Cogswell, Director of Sport, and Yancey Culp, Director of Programming. And today, you know, this is going to be one, uh, you know, we've already talked about it. Yancey's going to tear up for this one. I probably <laughs> might too, but Yancey, Yancey's 100% on this one. And this is going to be somewhat of an educational episode about the Jericho Project and, and the great things that they are doing uh, for so many people. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Duralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. Risks can include general knee pain and pain at the injection site. You can see full prescribing information at Duralane.com. What's up, Spartans? Welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. I'm your co-host, Jared Cogswell, along with my brother, Yancey Culp. We just had one of the most energetic, emotional DECAFIT events in our history, in our short history, uh, in San Jose, California. It was DECAFIT NorCal, and we were provided the opportunity to work alongside the Jericho Project. And uh, But the, the one thing that I want to focus on real quick is the energy that the, that the whole crew from Jericho Project brought from 6.30 a.m. all the way to 7.30 p.m. They, they helped us set up. They helped us run an awesome event. They were cheering on and, and applauding everybody's effort in the DECA arena. They got after it themselves. They earned their DECA mark. We'll talk a little bit about the, the big chant that happened in the middle of the event. <laughs> but I wanted to welcome... Uh, you know, a, a special human being to the show, and that's Bryce Johnson. So, Bryce, welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. Well, thanks for having me. That was uh, quite the experience with you guys. I appreciate it. Bryce, as the, uh, the project manager for, for Jericho and instructor with their construction education and research project, and you know, I know you you briefly told me that, that that you had been in the Jericho project for for five years and and you shared the five years prior to being in the project with me and you you took 10 minutes it was at the end of the day and we had turned ourselves inside out serving everybody and you you briefly told me about that but before I ask you my first question I I, I, I want to kind of finish painting that picture that JC painted. We're getting ready to dive in. At 8 a.m., everything cranks up in the DecaFit arena. It goes cray-cray energy. And at about 6.45, I'm introduced. I'm running around like a wild man, like I always am, JC as well. And I'm introduced. Bryce comes up, shakes my hand. And about 30 guys circle around me and get right up in me and right up in my face. And they're like, I was like, this is... That from that first moment, I was like, "What is going on here? This is amazing!" And we shook. I shook everybody's hands, not because I was getting ready to do it. They shook my hands. There was a skin contact. They were yes, sir, no, sir. I felt like I was back in the military, but in the most beautiful, genuine, authentic way. After five minutes of getting to know your group, I was I was hovering around there like a helicopter because I was pumped up to work with you guys, and I saw nothing but amazing energy all freaking day until the moment you left. And then, hell, then you ran out to the vehicle. You, you ran everywhere you went. You loved everywhere you went, and you served everywhere you went. So uh, we appreciate you from the bottom of my heart. And I want my first question, Bryce. What, what, yeah, hey, go yeah, ahead, JC. One, one, one ahead. thing I, I just wanted, you know, from Bryce's perspective, can you real quick, just for our audience, can you share the mission of the Jericho Project? So Jericho Project is a drug and alcohol program for um, for uh, men only. It's a men only program. It's a one year minimum program. It's for serious men that whatever they want to change their lives. It's a military like structure program. You know, there's no sugar, no TV. We actually want you to focus on yourself. That's all we want you to do. 
So there's no outside influences. I mean, you can only have contact with immediate family only. So it's a pretty, pretty high structure program. So because we want to build men for success. So we want no outside influences or nothing like that. And we concentrate on your physical development, your education, and then your spiritual. So mind, body, and spirit is what we do here. Mm-hmm. All right. I just, I just want to make yeah, sure we yeah. got that in because this, this group just amazed me. And it was so, you guys were all so inspirational. So, uh, Yancey, go ahead, brother. No, I appreciate you, you, you bringing that in. And if, if you could add to that, Bryce, um, talk to us quickly about the, like, who qualifies for being accepted into, like, where, do the, where are the men coming from? What are their current situations in most so, cases when they come in? So we have a quite the uh, interview process, but most of our people come from uh, state jail, state prisons or a lot of jails, or we do have walk-ins, but we do have a strict um, guidelines. You know, um, can't have no medical issues because we're pretty physical. Um, but we're pretty selective on what we take here. We don't want no people that are not serious about themselves. Because if you're not serious about the change in yourself, then um, it, it's not going to work for you. And it's not going to work in our program. So we don't want negativity or nothing like that. So we're really really strict on slang here. It's a yes or no sir program. And we just want everyone to succeed in life. So the process to get into Jericho, you can pick up the phone and give us a call and walk in through our front door and you'll be interviewed. And then we'll go from there. Bryce, you shared your your story with me. Um, you, you said, uh, you, you, you dove into where you were for the five years prior, uh, to coming into Jericho. And then you, you walked me through the five years since you've been in, in, in Jericho. Do you mind, uh, sharing your journey with, with our, our listeners and viewers? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I did five years in state prison. Um, I knew if I went home, it was going to be the same thing. I'm a second striker. I don't have a second chance and I know I'll go back home. What's the outcome is going to be? I've been doing it for the last 10 years. So I needed something that was going to change my beliefs. You know, I was ingrained in prison and all everything about prison, prison gang, everything like that. So I needed a new support system. You know, I came in here in a state of help. And I didn't even know this change was possible until I met Chuck Etcherson and Nick Rogers. I seen what they were doing here and they've been in my shoes. They were exactly sat in the meetings I sat in and... So once I seen that, that their proof of this could happen, I'm full on board. I'm 100%. I've been like that my whole life. I'm, I was 100% convict, so I just flipped it onto a positive note. So I'm just doing the same thing. You know, I'm just still doing the same thing. So I came here in a state of crisis. I knew the outcome. You know, failure is not an option in my life anymore. If I fail, what I do, I either go do life in prison or maybe just OD off drugs. So that's, that's how I looked at it. So I came here, and I still haven't been home. This is my new family right here, Jericho. All these men here, my purpose here is this is this is my family. And I like to bring that everywhere we go. I incorporate to everything. And I I love what I do here. I wake up and I love to teach these men, you know, and show them, you know, there is a community out there besides our community here, like Spartan. Spartan's been nothing but a blessing to us. I mean, it's it's good to go there and show them. We do CrossFit events and we do a bunch of trail running with the other establishments and then we also do our own training here so yeah it's been a it's it's been a main major uh development in my life yeah I, you know that's that's one of the highlights of the day too is man i i, I want to share real quick i was on the opposite end of of the convention center uh that day and you guys right in the middle of the event were getting the chance to earn your deck of marks and I was just hearing this noise and this energy and, and Yancey and I, you know, we, we thrive on that kind of stuff and I could overhear it. I mean, it was a loud building, right? But I could hear this group at the starting line and I was watching a friend over in Deca Zone 6, but I, I couldn't help myself but gravitate towards your guys's energy <laughs> And it was like walking into a mosh pit of positivity. And it was so amazing, Bryce, just to see you guys collectively so together and so purposeful and so supportive of one another. You know, Yancey and I have had the opportunity to work with the military. 
And sometimes there's a lot of conflict, you know, amongst those groups. Your group was so together. And I, I, the other part of that was just, I was amazed at the fitness level. Um, everybody, you know, we were chanting, bring it. And, and hopefully we'll be able to share that chant on the, on the YouTube and maybe a soundbite on this episode. But you guys really did bring it. And I was, I was just inspired. And I, and I want to thank you for that because we get to work with all fitness levels. And I didn't know what to expect from these, from these men that have been on their feet helping and, you know, just, just throwing their energy into so many people. And then they went out and did it themselves. And then you guys came back to volunteer more and, and helped, you know, helped us break it down. That was our fastest breakdown in DECA fit history. Mm -hmm. And we got after it again. We we had another chant and um, I, I just, I can't thank you enough for, for bringing that type of light uh, to our community. And, and I just felt like we were all bonded and we were one big family. So thank you for that. No, no. Thank you for uh, bringing the energy yourself, man. The look in your eyes alone was set, said enough, man. You're a tense guy yourself, man. I've seen the look in your eyes that fired me up right away. And, and it's good to feel that. I mean, going into these events, like I, I tell them, man, um, the race is fun and all that, but volunteering and getting to uh, socialize and hear these other people's stories, asking them how they're training and what they're doing and showing these guys how to socialize. Because a lot of these guys have been in jails and prison, gangs, and they don't know how to socialize properly. Mm -hmm. So so mm -hmm. now we show them, hey, take out the slang, take out this, and then to hear some positivity, here's the community to do that too. So if they when they do leave our program – they are going to go to Spartans, CrossFit, and stuff like that. Good ass, good communities. Mm -hmm. And every time they come back, they're just guys are just glowing. And so we have a community meeting every Wednesday, and you get to see the change of them. Some guys just not really, not really know what he's going to do here, and he's not serious. We call it being on the fence if he just wants to go back to prison. Or, but when he goes to these Spartan events and he meets people like you guys and hears you guys talk like you guys did, it changes them. It makes them. Uh, <clears throat> makes them more socially accepted again. And then just like, wow, these people are accepting me. They know my story. They know I'm a criminal, but they don't care. They care what I'm doing now. And that does so much for the guys. You guys don't even know what you guys did for these mm. gentlemen here. Mm. I, I want to, I, I want to um, dig in just a little bit more on your story. And, and I know Yancey was, was getting there as well, but um, wh where did you call home before, uh, Jericho. I uh, come from a small town up by Yosemite called Groveland. Uh huh. So small mountain town. Mm hmm. Um, been uh, I was up there probably since I was uh, in my teens, and then just started going to prison for the last ten years. Yeah, and, uh, and so. what were you in prison for? Um, um, uh, robbery, and then my mm -hmm. first one was cultivation of sales. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I started hanging around the wrong people, started uh, prison, did not rehabilitate me at all. My first term, it just made my network of criminality get much worse. And it made showed me something honorable because I lost my parents when I was young, lost my lost my dad when I was 15, then my mother later on when I was 19. So I really had no support out there. So I gravitated towards 
prison and that and that kind of venue. And so once I've seen there and then the last 10 years, I've just been in and out of prison. And so uh, I just got tired of that, tired of it. And what was the point? Where were you? What was your state of mind? And, and where were you even physically before you you became part of the Jericho Project? Um, Just your basic uh, prison workouts, your calisthenics as body weight. I, that's about it. Never touched weights in my life. Never been to a gym in my life until I came here. Yeah, and, and but how did how did you even find out about it? Um, I heard some guys in, in my prison that were actually went here and got discharged from the program and said yeah, these guys are fucking on your ass. So you know, just talking really smack about the program. I'm like, they hold you accountable. I'm like, that's what I need. I need accountability. I need someone to be on my ass because I need this change. I'm like, I don't know how else I'm going to do it because I can't go to another program where it's faith based or somewhere where it's going to talk about feelings. That doesn't work for me. I need somebody to hold me accountable for my actions, hold me accountable for my goals and tell me, you know, hey, this is what you're going to do. Actually show me. And this is what you get here. Mm, we, yeah. we tell the guys how to how to be successful. We create success. You know, for the the listeners and the viewers, too, um, you know, I. Towards the end of the the night, the the day of DecaFit, I just remember there was a couple of guys that they were helping out in the the corner of the building, and and you know it was a long stretch, and you guys call over for a couple of those guys, and they just sprint, they sprint for the group, and I was going, man, it this is militant, you know, yes, but it was it was militant in a very positive, constructive way. And I, I was just really impressed because, it, again, of that commitment to one another. Yeah, because, um, you know, our vision of success is going to work every day and also, you know, being supportive of your community. So, you know, we like to go above and beyond and show these dudes, hey, if you can do this for one year, you can go home and do what you got to do. If you do our program for the minimum of one year, and then we have an aftercare program, too. So you can stay on rent free and work for us and save all of your money. We have another apartment complex. We have alumni here. So we have an aftercare program. So you don't have to go home. You know, like I chose not to. I became staff and then continued my, my career here. We'll be right back to this interview. But first, a message from today's sponsor, Doorlane. You know that knee pain can really slow you down. Sometimes that knee pain is due to osteoarthritis, a disease that affects some 14 million Americans. Learn about osteoarthritis knee pain and how to alleviate it at oaneepainrelief.com. You'll find information there about non-surgical, non-opioid treatments for osteoarthritis knee pain that may help delay the need for knee surgery. One treatment you'll find there is Doralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months of relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. It's indicated for the treatment of mild to moderate osteoarthritis knee pain when conservative treatments have not worked. Risks can include general knee pain, and pain at the injection site. Full prescribing information is at doorlane.com. Spartans say no to limits. You can learn more at oaneepainrelief.com. That's oaneepainrelief.com. All right, back to the interview. Bryce, do you, talk to us about, you know, what what we saw were your level. You've been there five years, and I think you told me some people have been there for a couple weeks. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but walk us through like your day one, when you walked in those first five minutes to that first day, even to the, like, at what point do you start now that you're a staff member five years, at what point do you start to see epic change happening? Because obviously nobody walks up there like Bryce Johnson right now. And like what we saw, but I, but knowing that we saw some guys there that were two, three, four, five, six weeks in, maybe walk us through that process early, early yeah. on, man. So you come in in a, in a state of, you know, help. You come near a state of help. I mean, like I did, I came here straight from prison, came on the bus, paroled straight here. I came here not knowing what to expect into, uh, we have community meetings where we go over issues and we go over, you know, Sir likes to, Chuck Etcherson likes to pick out a topic and then break everything down. So I came here knowing I had to do this, give it my all, like I do everything. And day one here is, it's pretty, um, you get, you go to the apartment and then you come to the meetings, which is 
Chuck Etcherson has a way of, he's pretty uh, good with his words and he can break everything down, everything that we've been ingrained with prison life and everything like that to where none of us are college educated. So he was very easy to break it down to where we are understanding and he's also proof of it. And so with day one, when you walk through this door, it's, it's really overwhelming because you're going to get a chore. You're going to get a responsibility. You got to shave your, you know, we got to shave every morning. You got to do your hygiene, just like the military. You got to keep a number two haircut. You got to make your bed. You got to make your lunch for work. And you got to have all your gear. You got to have your, your, your laundry folded nice and night, just like the military rolled up. And everything has to be inspection ready. I mean, if we're going to walk into your apartment, your drawers better be on point. You're 45 on your bed better be good. Otherwise, you're going to make the whole house is 45 until you get it perfect. So once I seen what was going on here and knowing that these people ain't fucking around, I said, this is it. This is going to fucking work. Mm. And I, I didn't do a perfect program. I bumped my head on my way, got demoted because it's just like the, the military here. We have sergeants in our apartments and then the soldiers beneath them and they report to us. So, Mm -hmm. and then I start seeing the gym is when I start seeing self-respect and I start seeing the gym. That's, that's, that's my church. That's my sanctuary right there is the gym, you know? So that's when I start feeling self-confident going to the gym and then I can start working on my behavior. And Mm -hmm. then after a year, I really loved what I seen was going on here and then became staff after I graduated. What are the, what are the stats, that, you know, for the guys that do, like you decided to stay, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, after two years, you decided to stay on a staff, is that correct? After one year, I had a one, one year, year of okay. commitment. Okay, so mm-hmm. after one year of a commitment, guys are doing well and they leave. What I, I, I've read somewhere, and, and B, tell me if I'm wrong, but it seemed like the stats were pretty freaking amazing. We have the highest success rate in the nation for long-term sobriety. So a typical, like your um, Salvation Army or your typical recovery program is um, they have a success rate of 98%, but after two weeks, they're going to be using again. So with our program, out of 100 men, 40 of those men will graduate, and out of those 20, those men will have two years of sobriety. So we have the highest. You said 40 40 graduate. Yeah. Yeah. And, and out and of that 40, 20 of them will have two year sobriety. Okay. Do you think, Bryce, that a part of it, you know, I, I just, again, I, I, I kind of just get little goosebumps about the other day seeing you guys together and how everybody was committed. Do you think it's the accountability to one another and the, the brotherhood that you guys share that is is helpful in that process? Because I the the more I'm learning about you and and getting to know you here, it's like man, I I'm not going to let Bryce down, and by by me screwing up, you know, like I I am accountable to this team, this family, everybody that's brought together here. Yeah, so like so everything we do here is at a community level, right? So so if the guy here wants to lose some weight, right? So he's going to stand up in the community and make that known. Hey, I want to lose eighty pounds while I'm here. So now our whole community knows that he wants to lose 80 pounds. Now he's, he's, now he's on the hook. And we're going to help the guy with his nutrition and everything like that and hold him accountable and make sure he's getting the proper exercise, proper nutrition. And that's all it is, is accountability. And when you see someone in the apartment or wherever it's at is not uh, applying by our structure, you're going to call him out and bring him to the staff member and say, hey, this guy right here was talking inappropriately. He was, you know, being negative. And then we'll get that guy out of here because it's just like cancer. It will spread. So we don't have no negativity here or none like that. Just accountability on anything. You're what you're doing here. So we got, you know, mind, body, and spirit, right? Mm. So mind, body, and spirit. So first thing you got to do is you got to get your, you got to get your mind. You got to get your mind right. That's with your education. So we have five keys charter school here. So you can get your, you can get your high school diploma or your GED. So once you got that way, you got your body. You go to the gym, start getting physically fit, and start feeling good about yourself. Then you have your spirit. Our former spirituality is when you're doing so good, the next man's going to come up to you and ask you how you're doing that. No matter if it's cooking, in the gym, at work, doing your homework, even folding your bed or doing your laundry. When the next man comes up and asks you, how are you doing that? That's our former spirituality here. 
Mm. Let, let me ask you this outside of the walls of, you know, the, the complex and the buildings that, that you guys live in and, and train in and, and stay together in, what is it like for you out there now versus when you came in? Um, well, you know, I, since I'm a staff member and I graduated with a program, you know, I'm able to leave, you know, on the weekends, you know, but I don't, you know, I usually stay, I usually take the guys on a run or something like that on the beach um, or something like that. You know, I just still, I love what I do here. I mean, I love taking the guys out. I love, love seeing success with these guys and not letting them quit on themselves because that's what it takes sometimes is taking a group of guys that are just not really sure what they want to do yet and trying to get those guys to say, because it sucks when someone gives up on themselves and they walk out our door. When, when you say that, man, you know, we, I'm going to say it for you, Auntie, because we, we've been doing this for 60 years and it feels like your purpose is to positively impact others. Like you wake up with purpose every day now. I do. And man, I, I can feel it. I can, I could feel it through this, this freaking screen, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, that's your passion. That's your, that's your purpose. And, and a lot of people have a hard time finding that. And you found it, gosh, I would say one of the hardest ways a, a human being can find it. But man, I, I I'm just, Obviously, you're choking me up, brother. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's definitely, you know, after a while, I know you find this is my purpose. It's because you can have a career and not love your career. You can wake up and not love your career. But to have a purpose, is, I think that's the best thing to have is a purpose. I mean, I mean, I don't want to do anything else. I mean, I enjoy what I do here. And when you see a man graduate and he stands up, because our former our graduations are no big. It's just you stand up in the community and you get bow out to Sir, to Chuck Etcherson. And I thought that was the ultimate sign of respect. And then you also talk about the peers that helped you get through your program. And then when those men stand up and say your name, that you helped them succeed at what he was doing and he's ready to go on. And you're like, man, I saved one person. I mean, that, that one person, that's that's all I need. If I can save one person, that's phenomenal and so when one person completes our program it's a it's it's a phenomenal feeling Bryce I've never seen and, and I'm not exaggerating in my life I had never seen from an individual man uh, every man that was there from an individual perspective and as a group as a whole I've never seen a level of service minded group service-minded people and and a group that was so present i'd never seen a group more present or individuals more present every time i would speak to them they would they would just like it was like they would consume themselves in the moment every time they were judging they would consume themselves and they would become a part of that moment and become a mm -hmm. part of that athlete's goal to get to those 20 reps or whatever they were doing Maybe you've seen something that happens at Jericho that we you haven't talked about yet, but where does that extreme level of service to each other and to being so damn present? I'd never seen it like it, anything before. And I spent four years in the military, man, and I became pretty good at it. I've never matched what I saw, and nor do I know if I could. I mean, it all goes back to Chuck Etcherson, man. He is a phenomenal human being. Chuck Etcherson, um, he still he does three meetings a week here. He does a newcomers meeting Tuesdays and Thursdays, and then he does a community meeting and he speaks. I mean, hearing that man speak was what what, what made me know that this is this is a real thing. This is the real deal. This is going to work. I just have to put in the work, mm -hmm. and you have to put in the work for anything like to change. From our backgrounds or anything like that, you have to put in the work like you do anywhere else, man. If you want to win that event, you have to put in the work. Just like anything in life, you want that career, you want to go to school, you got to put in the work. And uh, yeah, I put in the work every day and I enjoy it, man. I enjoy the grind every day. Seven days a week, man. I'm I'm grinding seven days a week and I, I enjoy it.
maybe a little tired towards the end, but I enjoy it. I, I wanted to really talk to, you know, beyond, okay, you know, we're going to transform ourselves, uh, mind, body, and spirit. The The other thing when I was learning more about Jericho Project was what it does for your self-esteem. You know, like it, you've, you've obviously been at the lows of low in your life. You, like just even hearing about your parents and your upbringing and in, in that, I, it's, I can't even fathom that. But talk to us about like who you are now, um, you know, before this all started. <laughs> uh, man, I mean, it, I trip on that to this day on what I can do now. So I'm a project manager, so I'm in the field most of the day. And um, so we do uh, mid-high rises. We do uh, glazing. So we get the guys in our vocational NCCR. We get them certified in that, and then we'll get them in the field to actually learn some skills so they can have actual life and chance. So, you know, I have to go talk to superintendents, project managers of big jobs in the Bay Area, all over San Francisco, and then... Now I have the confidence to walk into their office and tell them about issues and how to solve them and stuff like this. I would never got that in my life if it wasn't for this program. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could walk up in there and they respect us. I mean, they're like, who are you guys? And then, then after I've built a relationship with them, I tell them about our background. They're like, we want you guys here. We want every spark. They, they just, they just love us. And it's a yes, sir. Yo, sir. And we also come with solutions and we don't, we don't bullshit. We're just straight to the point. And our work ethic is just, they love our work ethic. This is, there is no more work ethic like you guys. <laughs> and so, yeah, I get a lot of confidence. I mean, I wouldn't, before, before I came to the program, I would never do anything social. I was antisocial because of my drug use. I wouldn't, if you couldn't even get me to a spar and you couldn't get me anywhere near a spar nor anything with people that weren't doing drugs. There's no way in hell. I was very antisocial. Yeah. And to see me doing this now, even on this podcast, I mean, in public speaking, speaking to a community, our community is 120 people. Yeah, I still get, it's still hard to speak in front of our community, but it's, it's, yeah, I've overcame a lot here. And well, still I, th I, th I think everybody would agree. You're, you're crushing it, brother. Like, <laughs> the, the, I, I'm supposed to not be here right now. Okay. I can't get off of this podcast. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you are, you are firing me up. I, well, you guys I want you on. Go ahead, Bryce. When are you guys going to come? <laughs> when are you guys going to come to Jericho? Are we, we able to come? Anytime see the you program? want. Anytime you want to come, man. We got you guys. Uh, we, we, we've got to do that. I would love to do that. I, I, I told J Joe DeSena, our boss today, and I've told Jared and I've talked about it. I was like, I want these guys on our team. You, it's like, it's everyone. And I, I'm probably going to tear up here, but I, I got to know some of your guys a little better than others. I would have loved to have had an hour with each one of them. Mm -hmm. The young gentleman, a little shorter gentleman, a uh, sh very short blonde hair kid. You, you know who I'm speaking of? Uh, Ronan? R maybe, I think Ronan, yes. I, I just, his passion, man, it it brought me to tears a couple times the day of. And the, uh, the shorter black gentleman, head completely shaved, just the b most bubbly, amazing smile, I've ever seen in my life. I got to work with him putting together. Um, we were loading the bike. We were loading the bikes up and they had never put those freaking bikes on in their life. And they had done them a little wrong. And I came in and there was zero frustration. And we just started working together and, and we, he, he started seeing how I was doing it. He's like, you know what? If we get these three on, it'll be our model and everybody else will be able to see this one. And there was a moment in there. We were working together and the bike handle shifted and it pinched my finger pretty good and it freaking crushed him. He apologized 50 freaking times and I was fine, but it was just, it was like we were, we were brothers, man. He, it was like, we had known each other for 50 years. He, we were just chatting it up and this, the most amazing personality, but I, I got a little extra time with those two guys and obviously with you, but Every interaction I had, I had was like that. But those two, I, I wanted to bring that up. So, what's the what's the young black gentleman's name? That's Larry. Larry Austin. Love Larry, man. How long has Larry and Ronan been in the program? Ronan is actually graduating in a couple of days, and he's staying on. 
And Larry Austin's been in the program, I think, a little bit over a month now. Yeah. Awesome. Man, well, you, right. you, tell, you tell him that, dude, he's going to make it. So, so, so when you, when we, when I take guys to the show, soul events, there's two criteria that, that makes you qualified to go to one of these things. You either earn it or we see that you're going to benefit going to it. Like you're like, I'm like telling you guys before there's guys that are on the fence and they're just like, not sure if they're just like, they want to, they want to stay here and just be quiet and just do instead of going to prison. Cause there's guys here that have 20 years suspended. So they're like, you know what? I'm just gonna do my number here, and then I'm. I don't. These guys are fucking crazy. So, Larry, he was bumping his head here, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna bring him to the Spartan, and I'm gonna show him what I do, show him the community, and show him what what's possible. Mm-hmm. And I took him to the Spartan and slow, and San Luis Obispo, and he's. And then since then, it it did what it was supposed to do. It worked. Show him that community. Show him Spartan. And he has just been thrilled ever since. I mean, every time I see him, and he just thanks me. And then I took him on this one again. And it's just, it's just, it's just dynamite when they see that. It's just, it's awesome. Love those I, I, guys, man. One, one of the last things I'll, I'll share here with the, with the audience was, you know, there's, there's so much going on during the event and you want to touch every single participant that's out there. But I guarantee you guys touched everybody out there. You applauded every single person. I was amazed. I was watching three of the guys over by Decazone 10, every time somebody was running by, they were just clapping them up, cheering them on. And it was, and, you know, sometimes it takes you a second for the light bulb to switch on. You're like, wow, oh my gosh, they're supporting every single person every single time. Like, this is amazing. I, I've never seen it. And I, I just, I've just got to reiterate, you guys inspired me. I know you did Yancey, the rest of our team. And, uh, man, I, I can't wait to see you guys again. Oh, you will. You will. Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up. Do you want to be ready for anything? Download Joe's free ebook at spartan.com slash ready for anything. Do you know someone who needs a little help staying motivated, staying informed, getting or staying mentally and physically resilient? We're here three days every week with a mix of content to help you stay strong. From mindset to nutrition and everything in between. Listen every Tuesday to hear Joe DeSena, Spartan Race founder and CEO. And the rest of the week, join us for DECA, Endurance, and Classic episodes. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Duralane, a single injection that may provide up to six months relief from osteoarthritis knee pain. Risks can include general knee pain and pain at the injection site. You can see full prescribing information at Duralane.com.